Away. We welcome you back to Studio B and a Friday edition of BYU Sports Nation. The man who will host BYU football with Kalani Satake, Greg Rubel, the voice of the Cougars, joins us now on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline via Zoom. Greg, it's great to have you on the show, 17 days away, talking about football, preparing for a coach's show. How are you uh, controlling your enthusiasm at this point? Well, I, I think the, the best way to put it is, is that each day, I, I, I get a percentage fraction, you know, more excited for what's to come. Um, I, I'm kind of ramping up to this thing. The closer we get, uh, the more likely it is that good things are going to happen. Uh, good things being those coaches show broadcasts and, of course, game days. It's been a while since we've had a game day uh, on the radio. And, and so uh, I'm excited to call plays again. And again, day by day, we get a little bit closer. I get a little more excited, a little more eager for what's to come. So we, we, we're starting to get, you know, games scheduled now, starting to find out about more opponents. Recently, you had games officially announced with Troy and with Army. Now, there are reports for other games that are not yet official. What do you make of the current schedule and how it's currently coming together? Well, Tom Holmo and BYU are doing the very best they can with available resources, and the resources in this case are available teams to play. Uh, we already know how the P5 essentially either shut down or shut out uh, the possibility for games. And so really, uh, you know, some bigger names might have been on the radar had some of those teams and leagues been more willing to play ball with BYU. But as it stands, uh, you know, just, just a great job piecing things together where he can, speaking of Tom Holmo right now. Uh, and, and it is quite remarkable. You know, the, the college football scheduling industry is stretched out over years and years and decades. And here we are uh, with Tom putting his schedule together um, in, in the matter of days and sometimes hours. And so uh, necessity being the mother of invention, we have the mother of all short-term schedule fixes <laughs> happening this year. It has been uh, rather enjoyable to watch uh, Tom work his magic. And now uh, with the reported games included here, BYU has six games on the home schedule. The reported games are Texas State, the Bobcats, the Roadrunners of U UT San Antonio, and now Western Kentucky being reported by Brett McMurphy of Stadium Sports today. With those six games in place, joining North Alabama and Houston and Troy, Greg, what do you think of the expectations for BYU at home this year with limited or maybe no fans against that slate? Well, of course, we hope that, that fans are involved uh, to some measure. And whether that number stays the same or grows as the season goes along, that would be the hope, right, that, that as different benchmarks are met, uh, more people can see BYU football. But that said, hoping there are some fans in the stands Right. I, I think, you know, Jason saying earlier, you, you've got one game that kind of stands out in terms of level of difficulty, not to overlook anybody else, but uh, the possibilities of a, of a five, six win home season, the way it's put together right now, should those games actually uh, come to fruition? Absolutely. Uh, it's not the schedule B you thought it would have by any stretch. You go from, uh, you know, P5 heavy or preponderance of P5 programs to now, you know, getting what you can. Um, and caliber of competition, you know, becomes kind of secondary to just getting a game on the slate. But it's the kind of slate that uh, BYU with this team, especially with the amount of experience coming back, and Jeff Grimes referenced it yesterday, offensive talent and continuity returning, he felt put BYU in a pretty good spot to kind of hit the ground running on offense this year. Now, defense faces an entirely uh, unique challenge with back-to-back -back academy games against triple option run-heavy programs. That said, offensively, BYU should put a lot of pressure on not only those road teams, but all those teams that now have to come to Provo and play at altitude and elevation this year. So uh, as, as much as one can be excited for the home slate that looks so much different than it used to, the prospects of getting on a run and, and picking up uh, a significant win total at home, I think, is very encouraging. Let's stay with that same line of, uh, of questioning then and, and stay with the offense. Through all of the, the Zoom, you know, post-practice, post-scrimmage uh, media availabilities, all the offensive coaches have been pretty pleased with what they've seen from the offensive side of the ball. Where do you expect the offense to maybe make its biggest improvement? Well, I, I think it could be in, in, um, in sheer playmaking ability. Um, especially a wide receiver. Uh, you know, I, I cross fingers for, for Gunnar Romney to have a, a full season of good health. And that's in every way uh, for him. 
Um, I, I hope, that, of course, you know, that the, the, the team can can avoid, you know, quarantine situations and, 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 and virus situations. But beyond that, just just typical good health. I, I think Gunner remains kind of a hidden gem only for the fact that we really maybe haven't seen him at entirely full speed from start to finish in the course of a season yet. And, and you know, from what uh, what we are being allowed to see during camp, Gunner is right now a playmaker. I think Neil Pau becomes a hidden gem because he was kind of out of sight, out of mind for a year. But that top trio of, of Romney, Pau, and Mill, um, you can ride those guys. And and as much as there's going to be rotation, and, and, and you know, as, as fast as BYU wants to go at times, there will be platooning going on between Bushman, those top three wideouts, and two or three running backs, that's a pretty solid core that you can really use. And I, and I hope, you know, go-to guys emerge from that group and that you have guys you can truly lean on. So that solid core, and of that core, one or two guys jumps out, you know, ideally a tight end, a wide receiver, and a running back to have statistically dominant seasons, whoever that is. Um, and I've done a lot of tweeting about this, guys. BYU's best seasons come when the best players have great seasons, not just good seasons, not just a bunch of guys being okay and spreading the, the, the wealth, but it's dominant guys. Can BYU find and identify those dominant guys to have special years? If so, BYU in turn could have a special year. So maybe, Jason, and back to your original question, uh, the biggest improvement comes uh, maybe just in, in identifying the key playmakers. And, and not just being more explosive, as Jeff wanted to be last year, but, but finding guys that can really help carry you. And then you've already hit on the red zone uh, situation, and, and, and that simply has to improve. And it was, a, it was a strength in Jeff's first year as the OC. BYU, for whatever reason or reasons, dropped back last year and, and saw more productivity you know, between the 20s or 30s and less when they got inside scoring territory. So those are the things to identify. But with the guys they've got, uh, I don't see why there shouldn't be somebody really emerging and standing out that way. The voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel with us on BYU Sports Nation. Greg, 17 days away from a Monday night showdown on ESPN National Television. An incredible venue, incredible setup, though there won't be any fans at Navy, and it will be a little bit different. What do you think of the matchup between BYU and Navy as you uh, watch in your quarantined uh, press box area, the midshipmen and Cougars meet for the third time all time. Well, I, I hope, and this hasn't been determined yet, but there's a possibility that um, that, that some members of the academy um, may be allowed to be in the venue, uh, socially distanced, of course, but there, but there might be some kind of vibe. And I, I hope this happens because it hasn't been confirmed yet, but there's a possibility since, the, the, I, since, as I understand it, they're kind of operating in a bubble already at the academy. Um, if, if, if there could be some kind of uh, you know, ambiance um, with, uh, with, you know, with, with members of the academy in the stands, it would sound great. Anything would sound great uh, just to you know, accent and enhance what's happening on the field. But certainly, you know, we might hear more and different kinds of sounds than we used to, which will be interesting in, in its own right. But uh, I certainly don't want to feel like we're broadcasting in a, in a closed off room somewhere. I still want it to feel like football. So whatever can happen to make that happen would be great. But as of right now, you know, no fans will be in the stands. The only question becomes, um, are, are, are some of the, uh, the, the, the mids fellow enrollees allowed to be in the venue? But all of that said, it's going to be football and it's going to be glorious to call. And what a great venue, uh, uh, you know, a, a location in terms of a campus on which to broadcast, and then to follow it up by going to, to West Point a couple of weeks later and having those two experiences come back to back, as you talked about, BYU and Army have never met. So, you know, Mikey Stadium will be a whole new thing for BYU, um, a first ever meeting. And the fact that you can start with, with two military academies is a pretty cool thing in this most unique of, uh, of seasons. Um, I think defensive coaches might choose a word other than unique to describe having to go <laughs> back to back option. But uh, that being said, uh, it's all part of, uh, of this new experience that we've been immersed in over the last few months and hopefully months to come. Great stuff, Greg. It's always nice to catch up with you and uh, to raise the levels of excitement. And we're all hoping that maybe BYU does have that bye week so that they have 12 days to prepare for Army after the physical toll of Navy. Thanks, man. 
Well, anytime, guys. And, you know, I'm just right upstairs whenever you need me. <laughs> All right. We'll say hi as we walk by after the show. <laughs> yeah. See you in a bit. <laughs> All right, Greg. That's good. Greg Rubel on the Deseret First Credit Union. Outline Deseret First. You know why we show how. Hey, we're doing it the right way. Socially distance. Six feet apart here. Greg's upstairs. This is how we roll right now. That's right. That's right. Coming up.